Blue skies, barely any wind, and we are ready to go qualifying in sound and vision from WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre, where uh, myself, John Hindorf, and Jeremy Shaw are waiting to talk you through uh, a battle for four pole positions. We're bringing IMSA Radio and IMSA TV together with our endurance racing community from not just uh, here at the track and in the US and North America, but around the world. If you're tuning in in Europe or further afield, thank you very much indeed for being with us. We are on the left-hand coast. The locals around here will always tell you uh, what the West Coast is and you just replace W with B. This 2.25 mile circuit or thereabouts is a real challenge, always has been with elevation changes. The surface itself is uh, not in the first flush of youth and that makes the tyre engineers and the suspension engineers have to work doubly hard here. Add to the fact that around the circuit. We never talk about track limits at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca because if you're off the track, you're in the dirt for the most part and you don't want to be in the dirt here. Old school? Yeah, a little bit. Drivers like it here because, Jeremy Shaw, they can make a difference and ultimately that is what driving a racing car at speed is all about and this is still a very very tough challenge indeed for the driver and the rest of the team very cool racetrack uh, a real challenge for the drivers and for the race engineers as well because uh, the surface here as you say it's older it's uh, the sand that blows across it all the time we saw during the practice session a little earlier today that there was a lot of sand just sort of swirling around on the straight between particularly between four and five but elsewhere around this track as well so that makes it even more slippery it's a real challenge and with the elevation change here as well blind corners you name it uh, it has it here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Shea Adam is our VP Racing Fuel Pit and Paddock reporter and you can bring us up to date we've got people joining us all the way through the weekend with what do we need to know about what's happened so far and also who's here who's not here and who have we got to watch uh, well, what's happened so far is we have seen at times much quicker than what we were anticipating, particularly for practice sessions, and times quicker than we've seen before. The track record, which still stands to Catherine Legg, she set that back in 2018, uh, that could fall today. At 1 minute, 24 seconds, 0.456 was the record. Earlier in practice, Madison Snow did 1 minute 24.237, but it's not an official record yet because it's not an official session. So this qualifying session, we could see times quicker than that. In GTD, we have one driver change that is notable because Jacob Abel making his IMSA debut this weekend for Compass Racing in their Acura number 76. He will be their qualifying driver as the silver rated driver sharing the car with Mario Farnbacher, a race winner twice over on this series. Uh, this, uh, series at this track i should say we do have another car because two hearts are better than one as they've been saying heart of racing have brought their number 27 machine out of the stable for ian james so we'll be doing the qualifying duties there sharing with again former race winner and actually former race winner with mario farnbacher Alex Ruberis, welcome back to IMSA. Alex, I've missed you, my friend. In the 96 Turner Motorsport BMW, we've got Robbie Foley, and that car is going to be super fast. Not only did they lead the championship, but Bill was the quickest driver on track. That would be Bill Power, Bill Oberlin, for the first practice session yesterday. Um, would you like to know the rest of the qualifying drivers, or should we Might leave as well. a surprise? No, let's do it. Let's do it. All righty. We got Rob Ferriel in the Team Hardpoint Porsche. That's car number 88. He shares that with Catherine Legg. Uh, in the 66 gradient racing Acura, the fastest Acura so far this weekend, Till Bechtelsheimer doing the driving duties there. We spoke to Mark Miller a little bit earlier on. Great to hear from him. John Potter is the other Acura driver going out for qualifying in the 44 Magnus with Archangel. A beautiful speed racer liveried car still. Richard Highstand trying to bring down hometown honors for Carbon as they run the Audi here at the track closest to their shop with Steve Dinah just a little bit up the road in San Francisco. We've got Roman DeAngelis, second in the championship, leading the sprint, doing the duties for the 23 heart of racing Aston Martin. 
Trent Hinman, Captain America in the 16 Wright Motorsport Porsche, Aaron Tielitz and Frank Montecalvo in the 14 and 12 Lexuses, respectively, Zach Robichaud bringing home the honors for Canada and Team FAF Motorsport, and then Madison Snow once again in the Paul Miller Racing Lamborghini. Well, uh, comprehensive. Thank you very much, Shay, for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. We, that's what that's what we like. Uh, that is the rundown then for this far, first part of qualifying, which will feature the GT uh, Daytona cars. These are by any of the name GT3s, of course. IMSA adopted the GT3 uh, formula some time ago now, and it's actually gone from strength to strength, Jeremy, hasn't it? And next year. IMSA becoming, uh, I think, the first to bring in what they're calling GTD Pro uh, uh, to try and keep the factories interested and allow for full pro teams. Um, it's uh, not unique, but uh, we haven't seen it in IMSA before and already a number of manufacturers expressing interest in that and indeed they say that uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. It looks like something similar will happen at Le Mans in the GT Le Mans category, uh, except it will be no pro teams. It will only be arms. So the, the need to push the factories elsewhere there is making the ACO do something different. But lots of interest for next year. And this GT Daytona category, Jeremy, very strong indeed. Yeah, super exciting. The competition just getting get it better and better and better. We've had several new teams uh, joining in this season. Uh, we've uh, one of the cars, the Gilbert caught off Mercedes, not making the trip out west this time. But we will have a, a, a new entrant in a couple of weeks' time in GTD at Long Beach with uh, US Racetronics joining there with a with a Mercedes actually for Stephen Agacani and Jacob Edson. So uh, uh, there's just lots of you know, lots of interest in this class. Uh, that's a, that's a, a pro am you know, traditional GTD lineup. But as you say, a lot of interest I think for next year as well. At IMSA Radio, if you want to get in touch with us here in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre, 15 minutes is what we started with on the clock. Now. If you haven't been following us all year, first of all, why not? And have you got a note from a responsible adult to tell us why you've been absent from the previous rounds? Um, but secondly, we'll let you know about a couple of changes for 2021. Um, um, when I say we're qualifying for position here, this session will set the grid for GT Daytona. The next session will award points for qualifying for GT Daytona, but does not affect the positions that this session sets. I think that's the easiest way I've, I've spent this to this time of the season trying to work out the easiest way to say that um, so that is what happened so it's the uh, less experienced drivers in the cars now and then the idea is that the pros go out and give the cars thrash them within an inch of their life basically and go for the points and it's Robbie Foley who sets the benchmark to start with with a time just under 90 seconds mr shaw we have seen extraordinarily fast times this week already on friday in the free practice sessions uh, and again today uh, what do you think we might get down to because i think catherine, in the last session didn't catherine's legs qualifying record actually get beaten by madison snow uh, it it uh, it did yes uh, and uh... Uh, and also, in actual fact, by by Trent Hinman, he dipped underneath it by a thousandth of a second as well. A uh, little bit warmer this afternoon. Uh, perfect conditions pretty much this morning. So, I don't know, she, she's going to be a little bit nervous. Of course, Catherine will not have an opportunity to defend that uh, pole record here this afternoon because Rob Ferriel will be qualifying the number 88 Porsche that she will be sharing with uh, Rob tomorrow. But uh, it's going to be a really, really interesting session. And you know, we've seen the, the BMW has been fast all the way through. Madison laid down that brilliant lap in the Lamborghini this morning. The Porsche was right there as well. The Lexus, you never count the Lexus out, do you? It's because no. uh, Aaron Tielitz already this season in that number 14 car has had a, a couple of pole positions, including last time out at Road America. Couldn't get a much more different track from, from Road America to here. But once again, you know, Aaron, he's fast wherever he goes. Already down to 10 minutes. And already the times begin to tumble as on his second lap, Robbie Foley gets down to a 125.866. And everyone else still 
getting their Michelins up the temperature and pressure. It, it's been uh, the talk of social media and IMSA.com and various team websites this week, but it bears saying again, Jeremy, that this track is a, a real challenge, not just for the drivers in that it's up and down and really tough corners, but I mentioned it in the introduction there, the surface itself the proximity of the very fine sands on either side of the track really aren't the friends of tyre manufacturers. Michelin, the sole manufacturer now in this championship, have had to come to terms with this over the years, and my goodness, they have done, but it is, it is not a simple matter of just bunging a new set of tyres on, put a set of stickers on and go out qualifying. That sounds the easiest thing in the world. It, it really isn't as simple as that here. Yeah, it's not. Uh, uh, you know, it's it, it's a super challenging track. It's just one that every driver loves coming here, uh, particularly for qualifying. You know, fresh set of Michelin tyres and just send it, do it, get it done, go out there. Really, really good fun now. So you know, the adrenaline will be pumping right here for all these drivers with uh, you know, this qualifying session already. It's uh, it, you know, it's not far from being halfway done already. And it is BMW from Lamborghini by just two tenths of a second. Roman De Angelis for Heart of Racing team in third. In, sorry, for the 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin. So used to only having the one car. Their second car, Ian James, in eighth position at the moment. But one thing we also know, and again, if you're tuning in in sound or in sound and vision on IMSA Radio or IMSA TV, uh, we know that these Michelin tyres are pretty durable, notwithstanding what we've just said. So we might see people staying out for the full session. Although here, Jeremy, we might not. Uh, and, and I wonder if that will just slightly change the tactics here for the use of tyres. And whether people won't actually go all the way to the end and uh, and put so much so much wear on the tyres because of course they do have to start the race tomorrow on the tyres on which they qualify in this session. Yeah, good point, John. It, you know, it is. Uh, it, it can be uh, a, a track that you're just you lay. If you can lay down a really really good lap uh, right out of the box, then then park it and keep those tyres in good shape for tomorrow. But yeah, it's, it's only 15 minutes and uh, the the race stint is. Uh, you know, it'll, be, it'll be the first that we're, we're expecting to be probably 45 minutes or so, maybe uh, thereabouts. So, you know, it's it's not it's it is critical, uh, and whether you when and whether you get the best out of the tyres. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think even then, you know, it, it, it takes the drivers a few laps to get up to speed, and the time goes past so quickly for 15 minutes. I'm sure most of them will stay out for most of the session. There's Madison Snow, though. Uh, it's taken him until lap five now. 24-7-1-1. All the drivers improving their times on this most recent lap. Just four one hundredths of a second behind him is Richard Highstand moving into the picture in that number 39 car barn with Peregrine Racing, Audi car number 39. Trent Hinman up in the third place now, super close as well. The top what the top uh, five cars at the moment, with, including Aaron Tillits in the number 14 Lexus and the number 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin, Roman DeAndres, all within two tenths of a second. Just uh, a quick note from Gradient Racing, uh, thanks to Dex for this. Till Bechtelsheimer hasn't gone out yet in terms of turning a lap. Uh, no problems, just managing the tyre strategy for the race. So exactly what we were wondering there, Jeremy. Uh, Madison Snow went to the top, DeAngelis went to the top, Foley now back at the top, and we're down into the 24s. 24 and a half seconds now. One minute, 24 and a half for Robbie Foley. So starting to get a little bit serious now with five and a half minutes to go. And uh, still another session to come for GTD, but that's all about the points. This is starting position. This is the crucial one in terms of the grid position for tomorrow's race. What do you reckon of that then, Jeremy? Saving the tyres till the last part of, of qualifying to give them a little bit more life at the start of the race tomorrow. 
Uh, yeah, OK. I mean, I'm not sure I'd want to give up the track position. You know, if, if, I, if, I, if I've got a, a sixth or seventh place car, uh, I'd want to go, qualify sixth or seventh rather than at the back. So if Till reckons he can go out there at the end of the session, take advantage of the fact that there's some more rubber lay down on track and get in a fast one, you know, gr great, good for him. Uh, it's certainly an interesting strategy. He's the only one to be uh, trying that today. But the track does seem to be getting better and better now because uh, Robert DeAndres is just point zero two three behind Foley, Trent Hidman's only point zero eight seven behind Foley. So the track is getting faster and uh, the times are com com coming down. It's super, super tight at the front. That's Jeremy Shaw. He's with me, John Heindorf, in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. Good to have your company. Down to the last four and a half minutes, just under. Madison Snow in the pit lane at the moment from fourth position as Trent Hinman goes quicker again by slim margins right motorsport portion to the top of the times Jeremy yeah by, by 0 0.063 eh? it's that's it's that close it's 0 0.0 something uh, 0 0.0 something covers the top three right now it's Trent Hinman a great lap by the uh, New Jersey driver number 16 right motorsports Porsche uh, Robbie Foley there in second place. Roman DeAndres, he's still pushing hard as he comes down the court through, through turn nine and the Aston Martin in third position. Madison Snow, he doesn't quite improve on that last lap. He's now into the pits, but his last lap was a 24.723, just for action slower than his best of 24.711 uh, a lap, the lap before. So, waiting for the last couple of laps to come in here. Porsche BMW, Aston Martin, Lamborghini, Audi, Lexus. That's your top six, all different manufacturers. Robbie Foley into the pit lane. I think that would be it. Shea would be reminding us now at this stage that you're not allowed to touch the car in this qualifying session. That would negate all of your times. So, if you've come in at the moment, there's really barely enough time to get out and back around again. Roman De Angelis goes up towards turn number five. Robbie Foley, as I say, in the pitch. Trent Hinman still out. The number 16 car just coming down to the Andretti Hairpins. The 16 car, rather, coming down to the Andretti Hairpins now at the start of the lap. That's your Paul sit there provisionally at the moment. Interesting that Foley has two of three fastest sectors but isn't on pole position, Jeremy. He's got sector one and two tied up. Yeah, but uh, a, a brilliant effort there by uh, by Trent Hinman to, in the final sector then, to put it all together. And he's uh, he hasn't been on the pole position since 2019 when he went on to win the championship. Uh, but uh, he's done a super job in, in this session so far. There's Roman DeAngelis ducking into the pit lane as well, out of third position. So second, third and fourth are now in the pit lane as our cars farther down the order. Frankie Monte Calvo, number 12 Lexus, he's down in ninth position. There's still no sign of uh, the uh, gradient racing accuracy. I think it's uh, going to be, it was definitely too late for them now to even settle up at all. So starting at the back, okay. It's, uh, it's a bit of a gamble, I think, by that team. Uh, the, we know the accuracy work very, very well around here. Uh, but to, to go at that track position is, uh, to me, slightly surprising, but yeah. well, they, they've analyzed everything. They think that's the best thing for that team. What uh, are the rules about people who change tyres and how they get put to the back of the grid? So if you don't go out at all, are you in front of the people who did go out and then change tyres? Yes. I, I think so, yes. Right. Uh, presumably, but uh, presume, I mean, assuming the car is in the pit lane with some tyres on it, uh, yep. and, uh, and therefore, presumably, they have to change tyres. Uh, for the for the second session that comes up very shortly with this, these new yeah, rules this season, it's hard to get my head around those to be honest. Yeah, that's a separate session though. So it is a separate session. Yeah, but you're supposed to change tyres for that second session, and if you didn't go out in the first session, uh, d d does that matter? Well, I, don't know. I, I suppose it just matters what car tyres were marked. So if they put a brand new set of tyres on and then didn't use them. Um, the word from the team was they were managing their tyre strategy for the race. I thought that meant me, they might do one or two laps, but if they put a brand new set of tyres on, which are now marked as their starting tyres, they then put a different set of tyres on for the points, and whether they decide to use a new set of tyres or not, 
I, I guess it's up to where they feel Mark Miller can, can get to for the points. Um, but then if anybody else decides to change the new tyres, they would be in front of them in brand new ti on brand new tyres. That is correct. Hmm. Yeah, well, I'm assuming so, but, but, but with the number 66 car not having not gone out at all in this session, does that then count as a as a change of tyres for the race? I don't know. It's the marked tyres. It's, no. it's, 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 it doesn't matter because they're going to be at the back in any case or close to the back. But uh, a tremendous effort there by uh, Trent Hinman. This is his fourth uh, pole position in IMSA World Tech Sports Car Championship competition. He had uh, three poles back in 2019 when he went on uh, to win the championship. Uh, that was in an Acura for, uh, for Meyer Shank Racing. He had poles at Sebring. Uh, Watkins Glen and Lime Rock that season. So this is another feather in a cap of Trent Hinman. So that is the provisional pole and position. By, and Sorry, go ahead, Jeremy. But, well, excuse me. I, I should have. I, I, he, he's sharing this car, of course, with Patrick Long, mm. who will now uh, drive the car in this next session. And Patrick Long uh, in, 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 is one of the most successful drivers here. Uh, he's had five wins previously uh, at. Uh, well, it's at Raceway Laguna Seca, more than anybody else in this field. Uh, and he's had he had one pole position here himself. That was in a DP car back in 2006 uh, when he uh, didn't win the race that year. He won DP here in 2007. Uh, but uh, Patrick Long is going to be very interested to see now. He's comparing notes there with Trent Hinman. And uh, Patrick Long now will, will go out there and try and replicate the fastest time mm. for that right most sports Porsche and gain the maximum 35 points from this upcoming session. Just a, a quick note. Uh, I Oh, that's rather annoying. The timing screen has switched over to uh, a different category. Um, the timing screen, as I was looking at it, wasn't ordered properly. It was ordered for a race and not for qualifying. Um, and so some of those positions beyond first and second weren't correct because Madison Snow had a faster time than the car that was shown ahead of him. So I'm going to have to go back and look at that now. Um, but and that was because the car above him had done seven laps and he'd only done six. So there's, uh, there's a slight snag on the uh, Alcamel timing system. Uh, Snow had done a 24-7, De Angelis a 24-8. Um, so, in fact, uh, that, that, well, that was a previous lap. That was a last laps. Right. Okay. So, so, so was his best was 24.711. DeAndre's best was, was a 24.591. Right. Okay. Fine. I see. Or rather, it, it wasn't. It wasn't Sellers, was it? It was, uh, it was Madison, Madison Snow yeah. in the one car. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, rather confusing how the. So we had we, we had basically the three tenths of a second covering the top seven in that qualifying session. It was Trent Hinman then for Porsche, the BMW of Robbie Foley, Aston Martin of Roman DeAndres, the Lamborghini of Madison Snow, the Audi of Richard Highstand, second of the Porsches with Zach Robichon down in sixth position, and Aaron Tielitz in the best of the Lexuses is, 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 is in seventh position. But as I say, all of them covered by just three tenths of a second. That's tight. Yeah. So now uh, there's a quick reset and uh, we will add in the GT Le Mans cars. They'll be racing for points and position and the GTDs now uh, are qualifying for points and position and now uh, the GTDs qualify for just the points. Oh, stop pushing that bar. That's a bit close. <laughs> right motorsport car. <laughs> uh, uh, braver than I am on a pit lane that is by uh, no means flat uh, at any point. It's all pretty much slightly uphill. Uh, and I thought if they'd lost control of that, that could have been nasty. So now qualifying, Shea, what do you know about the qualifying drivers for GT uh, Le Mans in terms of the points and the positions? Uh, I can tell you that for Corvette Racing, it is Team America across the board. Jordan Taylor in the championship leading number three machine and Tommy Milner in the number four. And Jeremy, I will beg you not to say what you did earlier because every <laughs> time we bring that up about Tommy, it doesn't come to fruition. So just not going to talk about that and hope that the silver Corvette can get a pole position uh, once again this year, but this time with Tommy driving. And then for Porsche, it should be Cooper McNeil in the 79 WeatherTech Racing Machine 
rain as he gets to go out. And indeed it is with the white and black helmet on it. Beautiful livery. Cooper very much uh, a second home track. Got the win at his real home track, Road America, last time out looking to try and make it two in a row. So still waiting for this session to get underway. Uh, and if Jeremy Shaw promises he's not going to talk uh, about Tommy Melder, he's going to make another point. Uh, yeah, well, I'll talk about the other Corbett in that case, Jordan Taylor uh, going out now, uh, looking to score his what, third pole in a row, I think, isn't it, uh, in that number three car. Uh, and he and his brother Ricky have are tied for most poles amongst the field in this here at uh, at uh, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca uh, in, in the field this weekend. Both of them had three previous poles. Jordan had the pole in the prototype in 2015 and 2018. Also, he is the uh, defending pole city here from 2020. His brother, Ricky, uh, has had the, the, the DP pole in 2011 the prototype poll in 2017 and DPI poll, basically, yeah, top category each time, but different uh, different uh, nomenclature for the for the for the prototypes of that era mm. uh, in 2019 as well. So both of them tied them for three polls coming to this weekend. So Jordan, of course, will be driving the number three car in this session. So still waiting for the start of the next session just seems to break the flow up this long gap between these two sessions the procedures that we had in the past were pretty much quick fire uh, I, I, I wonder if for the future and I know IMSA are talking to all the teams about this that we uh, might roll a different uh, category out in between these two so that they've got time to make their changes and change their drivers although of course next year with the addition of uh, GTD Pro presumably the Pro class will qualify uh, separately uh, and uh, from the the AMs at the moment GTD a Pro Am category just waiting for the green flag for this session, another 15 minute session to break into life. So we will be setting grid positions for GT Le Mans and it will be points only for GTD Pro. Just remember that because I will forget and talk about somebody being on provisional pole in GTD. That's been set. We know how that has gone. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, by the way, I think I said that Jordan Turner would go for his third consecutive pole. It's actually his fourth consecutive pole. Uh, it would be for uh, for Jordan. He was on the pole for the second Watkins Glen race, also at Lime Rock Park, and then last time out at Road America as well. So he's very much on, on a roll in, in qualifying in that number three Corvette. And the previous round, the first of the two races at Watkins Glen, it was his co-driver, Antonio Garcia, who started on the front position and this that car it's won three of those races but not the most recent one that most recent race at road america was won by the weathertech racing proton competition number 79 porsche so uh, antonio garcia and jordan taylor looking to get themselves back into the uh, victory lane this weekend and and to extend their already uh, pretty commanding championship lead in gtlm Engines beginning to come to life. And that's Cooper McNeil, I think, in the WeatherTech car share, is it? It is, yeah. And I'm just hearing from the pit lane, there is a lot of driver intel being shared between all of the cars, from the starting driver to the now points paying driver a lot of them have scrambled up onto the pit boxes to discuss with the engineers and to more importantly relay the information to their co-driver about perhaps where they made some time or more importantly lost some to see if their co-driver can benefit very interesting yeah very interesting and of course that just goes to what we often say about sports car racing it is a team game at imsa radio if you'd like to get in touch with us 
a busy weekend with Porsche Carrera Cup North America racing right now at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and their first of three races uh, this weekend. We'll have three more for them at the Petit Le Mans race weekend at, uh, at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta to finish off their season. All covered for you live on IMSA Radio com on our live video page if you've already found what you're watching now you'll notice we've got two players there this weekend double the excitement from IMSA so put them on two screens watch with them with one eye each or of course you can listen to the archive if you uh, decide to throw all of your attention one way or the other as IMSA is uh, providing so much content this weekend so the green flag has been thrown and the points for the GTDs will leave to one side at the moment we'll keep a little bit of a weather eye on that but really the important part of this is the first opportunities for the GT Le Mans cars to go out and to set their grid positions and to get their points as well I, I, I'm not being dismissive about the points at all because actually uh, it is so tight and we expect it to be so tight at the end of the season Jeremy that the additional points here for for where the pros qualify these GTD cars can make a difference and can fill the gap if during the race you finish a couple of places back from from one of your championship contenders you can almost sort of top top it up in this session Oh, very true. Absolutely right. And you're coming into this weekend in GTD. The number 96 Turner Motorsport BMW has just an 18 point advantage over the number 23 Aston Martin of Rome DeAndres and Ross Gunn. Uh, and there's 35 points up uh, for grabs for the for the pole city here. Uh, the, the lead is unlikely to change in this in this session. You're unlikely to get a 17 point swing here. True, but uh, it, it could be critical by the end of the season. And when we look forward to, the, to when the DPI cars go out there, there's just two points this weekend mm. separating the uh, second and third place cars and teams uh, in in this race with the, the number 31 car Felipe Nasr and Pippa Durrani. Just two points ahead of Oliver Jarvis and Harry Tickmore in the Mazda coming into this weekend. And this is a round of the GTD Sprint Cup as well, Jeremy, isn't it? It is. Uh, and for GTD in that, the number 23 Aston Martin has a, a pretty handy margin. They've got actually 202 point margin over uh, over Robbie Foley and Bill Oblin. The, the main reason for that is that the, uh, the, uh, the third round of, of the Sprint Cup series, which was at Watkins Glen, was not a particularly good result for the Turner Motorsport BMW finished down in the uh, 12th position there. Worst finish for a long, long time. So that's uh, that put a big dent in their championship hopes there. The Aston Martin, by contrast, in the Sprint Cup, has had two wins, a third and two fourths from the five previous rounds. Uh, um, and what is the, what sort of time should we be looking for for GTLM here? for their qualifying and setting setting the pace at the at the front of the field. It was the two Corvettes split by the Porsche in the final free practice session, but by his own admission, I think Cooper wouldn't expect to be uh, mixing it with the uh, with Jordan Taylor and Tom Milner. No, I would expect the Corvettes to be uh, du duking it out between them. And Jordan Taylor set a new record here last year by just under a tenth of a second. It used to be held by Jesse Crone, but Jordan Taylor took it last year at a 121.483. The fastest lap this morning was by Nick Ta uh, by Tommy Milner at a 121.680. So he's got to find a couple of tenths of a second in this session compared to this morning's time. I wouldn't be surprised if he did that. When Tommy Mill, when both the local events did their qualifying sim this morning, it was actually while there were other cars out on the racetrack. It wasn't, yeah, point. It wasn't until the, the final 15 minutes, which was the pro drivers only, which is kind of interesting. And we will see perhaps whether that was significant or not. Uh, coming down to the end of the lap, Tom Milner and Jordan Taylor qualifying the two Corvettes. Across the line then for Jordan Taylor, 124-0. Uh, 
Ah, I realised what the problem was earlier on. And fixed it. Ten minutes to go. 124-0, 1-6 for Jordan Taylor. Brian Sellers aiming for top points at the moment to back up the pole position already earned by Paul Miller Racing for the Lamborghini. 124.5 for Brian Sellers. Second in GTD, Pat Long for Wright Motorsports Porsche. Third, Bill Oberlin, Turner Motorsport. Top three drivers, all with GT Le Mans experience in the GT Daytona ranks at the moment. Uh, and as I say that, Brian Sellers spoils that for me, doesn't he? Uh, sorry, Wright that got pole position for GT Daytona, not uh, Paul Miller Racing. Brian Sellers coming down through the corkscrew. Just coming down to nine minutes to go. On 24-5, 2-4. He has. Let's see if he can beat that as Jordan Taylor goes quicker at the front of the field. And now down to a 21 5, Jeremy. Pace picking up. Because we should mention that the GT Le Mans category is different to all the other classes here in that they have a choice of Michelin slick compound tyres, uh, whereas everyone else is uh, running on a spec supplied tyre from Michelin. And it's not unknown uh, for them to mix and match those uh, tyres that they have available to them in the GT Le Mans class, Jeremy. True. Uh, particularly without uh, conditions being super hot this weekend uh, either. It's uh, pretty comfortable conditions. Is it uh, 20 degrees centigrade, which is, what's that about? Nearly 70 degrees, is it? Uh, I'm not sure what it is. 20, 20 66. Uh, and on the track, 66, okay. it's 45. Yeah, so, nice. so that's up to, uh, well, 113 uh, in the Fahrenheit scale. So that's getting a bit toasty for the Michelins on yeah, the that's, track. That's, that's, that's kind, of, kind of not unusual there. That lap, by the way, by your Jordan Taylor, 121, 588. That is the quickest of the, of the, of the day so far, uh, but it's fractionally outside his record from last year by about a tenth of a second. Top point score at the moment, provisionally for Heart of Racing, Ross Gunn, the 23, Aston Martin, bounces to the top in the sunshine here at wow. WeatherTech Racing, Laguna Seca, 125-153. Now, does that count as a lap record? Because it's no. not a qualifying session. I it's agree. a point scoring no. quick session. I agree. No, I agree with you. It, it won't count for my records, uh, but uh, it does, yes, another asterisk. I hate all these asterisks we're having this year. Uh, but no, I, yeah, the pole position uh, should be... Uh, the, the session that counts for record, I, I believe. Um, so, uh, so no, I don't think it will count for for your record. But uh, it is quicker than the, the that time from last year. And remarkably, Brian Sellers is only 0 0.014 slower in second place at the moment. So we've got a heck of a battle now going on in GTD. Uh, and a further 0 0.059 back is Jack Hawksworth <laughs> for the Vassar Sullivan Lexus, and all of 0 0.033 further back. It is Patrick Long. Add that all together, and you've got about a tenth of a second between first and fourth in GTD for the points being. Remember, we've set the grid already, and Pat Long's teammate has put the uh, Wright Motorsports Porsche on pole position. Got to keep reminding that mostly for myself rather than anything else. And we're down to the last six and a half minutes as Ross Gunn. Wow. Knocks it again. down to a 23.8 for a GTD car in that heart of racing Aston. This is the uh, the dark blue checkered car, number 23, heading to turn three and four at the moment. That is some time, Jeremy. Well, it really is a, a remarkable effort there by, uh, by Ross Gunn. I mean, it's come from nowhere, quite frankly. That, that car hasn't showed that sort of pace all weekend long. But when it matters... Uh, when points are on the line and they are vying for the championship lead in the overall championship. They already lead the Sprint Cup, as we said a little while ago, and they're trying to get back into the lead, which they lost on the points from the last, most recent race at Road America. So brilliant effort there by Ross Gunn. Still looking for his first pole position. 121.3 is now the mark to beat in GT Le Mans. Tom Milner, last time around, just nudged his time down a couple of 
ticks off the clock and stretches out to all of 0 0.024 of a second. So that's a change there. Milner goes to the top ahead of Taylor, 0 0.024. And uh, Kurt McNeil, only another second further back. Now, I know it's a relatively short circuit here. I think Cooper will be quite pleased with that, being uh, on a second. Yeah, should be. yeah, he absolutely should be. That's, yeah. that's a, that is a stout uh, performance. Uh, it as, really is. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Is. And, and, and sub record, new lap record there for Tommy Milner. Still looking for that first pole position in his what, 81st start this weekend. He hasn't qualified for the, the car in each of all, all those 81 races, of course, but uh, he's still chasing that first pole. Oops, sorry. I wasn't supposed to talk about that, was I? Uh, no. <laughs> Hashtag blame short. Uh, we have Corvette Nation. Uh, hunting you down now, Jeremy. <laughs> Jordan now 0 0.044 behind. It goes down to 121.322. And how about this for Cooper McNeil? A 121.9. He's now only half a second behind Jordan Taylor. It's getting better. It's getting better for Cooper McNeil. Now, if it gets hot and a bit slippery, it is Porsche time, no doubt. But those mid-engined Corvette C8Rs, beautifully yeah. balanced. But that is a heck of a time from Cooper McNeil. Yeah, and it virtually matches the time set this morning by Manny Campbell. Uh, he turned uh, a 23.917, I think it was this morning. 914 it was this morning. Of course Cooper it was 914, it's a Porsche time. Excellent, yeah, excellent effort by Cooper McNeil. Well done, Cooper. Well, that tells me. The faster again. Oh, 21.1. 21-2 and then a 21-1 from the two Corvettes. Cooper McNeil doesn't improve that time around. That was a slow down lap. But uh, that tells me that the WeatherTech Porsche is really nicely balanced, Jeremy, and that Cooper is comfortable in that car. The likelihood is he'll he'll uh, he'll start the car tomorrow, and it will be his job to try and keep with the Corvettes through the traffic before handing off to Matt Campbell to finish the race. And that tells me that they've got every chance of doing that. Uh, and that car looks, in visual terms, it looks really nice and it's riding the bumps well. And, you know, sometimes that doesn't translate to a lap time. It is here. That's a good car for tomorrow, that Porsche. Yeah, tremendous effort there. Uh, Lawrence Vantor, did we talk about Lawrence Vantor moving up to second no, place we did in not. GTD for FAF Motorsports? He did that, uh, well, a lap or so ago, six lap, but he's now competed eight laps. So second place for, for the FAF Porsche, that pushes it, Bill Oblin down to third position, Brian Sellers to fourth, Hawksworth to fifth, and Patrick Long in the car that will start on pole position tomorrow in GTD for Wright Motorsports, number 16 Porsche, now down in sixth place. So into the last two minutes now. Points still up for grabs in GT Daytona. It's 23 Heart of Racing, Aston Martin from nine Porsche. These are points position. Faf in second, Turner Motorsport in third for BMW. Fourth and in the pits, Paul Miller Racing's Lamborghini. Fifth, Fassa Sullivan's Lexus. It's the 14 car. Bill Oberlin now goes into the pits as well. Rounding off the top six, the Paul Sitter Wright Motorsports. That's your top six for points in GTD. For points and position, Corvette, Corvette, WeatherTech, Porsche. Only seven tenths, call it just under eight tenths actually, between the top three. And just just over six tenths between Cooper McNeil and a front row start. I said beforehand that I didn't think Cooper would be expecting to split the Corvettes. He said, damn sight closer to doing that than I expected, Jeremy. Yeah, that, that's really, that's, I think, by far Cooper's best uh, qualifying performance here. Of course, you know, Willis at Raceway Laguna Seca, he's got a lot of, uh, he, he regards this as kind of a home track for him. He certainly had a lot of racing here uh, and success here in the past in various different categories. So it's been a, a really take full advantage of that this afternoon, Cooper McNeil, to put that car in close contention in that third position. 
And I think now all of the GTD cars are on pit lane with uh, still a half a minute to go. So uh, the, uh, the only car on track right now is, is Tommy Milner, who's just going out to try and set one more lap. Last time around was a 125, 21.5 for Tommy Milner. Uh, and he needs to find, well, he needs to find four tenths of a second compared to that lap time. He's just going to knock his teammate Jordan Taylor off the pole position. Yeah, it's not beyond the bounds of possibility that the Michelins can give him the kind of performance we've seen it happen in the past where last man across the line has got pole position as the fuel, as the VP Racing fuel burns off. The car gets a bit lighter. Proper qualifying session. Time's elapsed, by the way. So it will be checkered flag this time around. Checking the splits, I'm not sure he's going to be able to challenge Green. his team. Oh, hang on a second. Green, yeah, in that middle sector. You'll tell if he steers out, and he is steering out. So he must think he's got a chance in this final sector. Through the final corner, a little bit sideways, a little bit of dust thrown up from the last left-hander. Now the long run to the line. He diamonds across to the finishing line. 121, 530. Ends up 0.116 away from his teammate. So that wasn't an improvement there. But must have thought he had a chance there, Jeremy, in that after that middle sector. Yeah, absolutely right. And uh, I think that was an identical lap time to his previous lap, lap actually. Well, certainly very, very close to the 21.5 in any case. So uh, two, you know, good consistency there from, from Tommy Milner, certainly. But again, it's Jordan Taylor who will have uh, yet another pole position. He'll break that tie, at least for, for the time being, with his brother Ricky uh, as he gets his fourth pole position here at WeatherTech Raceway in Laguna Seca. This also, by the way, will be, this is for, for Jordan. This is his uh, tenth uh, pole position in total, which is uh, second in the uh, all-time rankings here for uh, for uh, the, the uh, Inter WeatherTech Sports Car Championship since, since 2000. And 14, his brother Ricky has 13 pole positions. Now make that uh, 10 for Jordan Taylor. Actually, James French is in second position on 12, but this will move Jordan Taylor up to third in the overall, uh, in the all-time most successful pole qualifiers in the IMSA World Tech Sports Car Championship. Uh, congratulations there to Jordan Taylor. So Tom Milner still doesn't have his pole position. Hashtag blame Jeremy. Just saying it. Just, yeah, absolutely. Nothing to do with us, Shane. Nothing. We never said it. No, we're the innocent parties. No. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Absolutely. Shame. I was really. I, I was. I think everybody was hoping for Tommy to get that. He's had such such great success here in the past. There's a, uh, a congratulations there from his from from Jordan's dad, Wayne, who uh, strolled along from the Conic and Minolta prototype team. Now he's going to, of course, see his, if, if his, his other son, Ricky, can get the pole in that, if, if Ricky's qualifying the car, which I think he's not, actually. Is he, is he this weekend? Shay, do we know? I uh, don't know yet. I don't know yet, but uh, uh, certainly another tremendous effort there. Fourth pole position in a row then for Jordan Taylor in GTLM, already the championship leader coming into this weekend and a new track record. It's Jeremy Short, he's with me, John Hindhoff in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre as we're ready for the next session of qualifying. Shea Adam, our VP, Racing Field Pit and Paddock reporter. Uh, photographer extraordinaire, Rick Dole capturing that for posterity. The pole sitters down there. And we're waiting for the next session to come around. What do you what do you know, Shea, in terms of uh, of what is going to be happening? Um, I can tell you the LMP2 qualifying drivers: uh, John Ferrano for Tower Motorsport in the number eight, Stephen Thomas looking for another pole position in the number eleven for Win Autosport, one of two teams that tested here before actually coming to the track. So Stephen knows the track fairly well, having driven it a couple weeks ago. Dwight Merriman will be in the 18 Aero Motorsport LMP2 machine. And for the 52, it will be Ben Keating, once again, the fastest guy so far this weekend in the LMP2 category for PR1 Matheson, trying to get the home pole position. Just before we leave the GTs, though, I've been doing a bit of math, and you know what happens when I do math. <laughs> um, by my count, the championship after that qualifying session is down to a five-point lead 
for Heart of Racing, 1947 points compared to 1942 for Turner Motorsport. Then in third is Faf with 1862 and fourth Paul Miller Racing with 1834. In sprint category, with the maximum amount of points going the way of the sprint championship leaders coming in, they continue to lead 1725 points ahead of now second Turner Motorsports 1518. But third is the 14 Lexus on its own. It wasn't a tie break with its sister car. They're only five points behind Turner Motorsport. And then the sister car is further back. So that did have an effect in the sprint championship as well as the overall. Thank you, Shea. Excellent work. Excellent work. So the usual formalities going on down in the pit lane as the GTLM pull sitter has photos, interviews. Tony Garcia down there as well now, talking to his teammate and passing on the congratulations. In fact, the two pull sitting GT cars, the number 16 right blue and white and black car sitting in behind the corvette it's only when you see them close together that you realize just um, how compact uh, a 991 porsche is and i actually think that's quite a uh, quite a chunky car now but next to the corvette it it looks like a three-quarter size or a seven eight size model jeremy as it's sitting in behind the corvette that's extraordinary yeah, it does, doesn't it? Isn't that, isn't that weird, that perspective that we're looking at uh, on the pit lane here? But uh, tell you what, both cars are super effective, aren't they? And, oh, yeah. And uh, they were both... Uh, the the, uh, the Porsche wasn't... won't get the most points out of this qualifying session, but it will have uh, the uh, honour of starting on pole position tomorrow, and that's uh, more important in the championship chase because the, the, the number 16 car... Uh, is cur currently runs in the, in the fifth position. It's a couple of hundred points behind the leaders at the moment, but that's in, in new money. In old money uh, points, that's only 20 points, which is you know, far from insurmountable with three races remaining in the season. So just uh, one further session. This is the combined session for the prototypes, both LMP2 and Daytona prototypes that should give us 10 cars out on track so there should be no issues uh, with the guys being able to find a bit of track and a clear lap another 15 minutes set to go on the clock uh, and Jeremy before we get into this just remind us of the sort of times that we've been seeing this week from this group of cars yeah we've seen uh lap record sub lap record times for both uh, categories uh, it's very unlikely that we'll see a, a new lap record i think in lmp2 in qualifying because the am drivers as shay was talking about a few minutes ago will be qualifying those cars in lmp2 but we've seen uh, some super fast times so far the quickest of the weekend was set by ryan dial this morning at 117.065 uh, which was uh, actually 17 0 was, was just fractionally outside of the uh, fastest. Yeah, actually, the fastest time was set yesterday by Michael Jensen at 116.1, and that was underneath the old qualifying lap record for LMP2. For DPI, the record stands to Ricky Taylor. He set that last year, uh, excuse me, two years ago, 2019, at 1 minute 15.035. The fastest time this weekend, a 114.552. That was by Harry Tinkle this morning in number 55, Mazda. And it will be Tinkle who qualifies that car. Shea Adam may have some news from the VP Racing Fuels Pit and Paddock report on who else will be taking qualifying duties here. Well, I saw a flash of green behind the wheel of the MSR Acura. The so come at the Frogs qualifying then. It, well, that's what I was going to say, because uh, <laughs> both Olivier and Dane have green on their helmets, so it doesn't really help that much. Uh, it's definitely Philippe Albuquerque in the number 10, Connick Nolt Acura, though, the sister uh, manufacturer car out on the circuit, and Philippe will want to be trying to maintain the honor for Wayne Taylor's organization of taking another pole position. A blue helmet is in the number five Mustang sampling Cadillac, 
which easily means it's Tristan Vautier. I really appreciate that he and Loic have very different helmets. I uh, have yet to see who's driving for Chip Ganassi in this session, whether it would be Ranger Van de Zanda or perhaps uh, none other than K-Mag, Special K. Uh, the 31 is either Pipo Durrani or Felipe Nasser. It's been Pipo who's been the fastest guy on track for a lot of time so far this weekend. I tend to want to put him in. The but if our mock qualies are to be believed, yeah. John, it'll be Ranger, um, Philippe Nasser, and Olivier well, Pla in those three cars. Don't forget they put people back in for the last 15 minutes. That is true. Which I thought was interesting. And there was nothing between them this morning. What was it, 0 0.002 of a second at the sharp end of the field. Engine sounds are telling us without even seeing the green flag waving, which it is being waved to the pit lane because that's where everyone is and we are out and running. It is K-Mag, special K in the 01 Cadillac. Tristan Fortier, John Ferrano for Tower Motorsports, number eight, Orica LMP2, Philippe Albuquerque for the number 10, Konica and Minolta, uh, Stephen Thomas for Win Autosports, number 11, Orica in LMP2, Dwight Merriman in the 18 for ERA, Pete Autorani in the 31 car. From Ben Keating in the 52, that's the Piawa Matheson LMP2 car. Dan Cameron for Mershank Racing uh, in the Acura DPI. And yet to go out, the number 55, but I'm pretty certain that's going to be Harry Tinknell. Although on the timing, it still has Ollie Jarvis's name uh, next to it. I think that's just alphabetical whilst it's sitting in the pit lane. Does that surprise you, Jeremy, that Durrani's been plugged back in again to qualify? No, uh, I mean, there's nothing to choose between those two, uh, generally speaking. I, I would say, although uh, arguable, uh, no, so, uh, there certainly isn't much to choose between them. Uh, Pipo's had success here in the past. He's won here uh, a few years ago. Uh, Nasser's still looking for his first win here, but uh, you know, whoever has the final stint in the race is, uh, is going to be well-placed to go for the win. No question about that. That car's been fast all weekend long. So we'll wait for them to get up to speed and start uh, turning the kind of laps that we expect. Uh, don't forget for the race on Sunday, if you're in the States, XM202 on NBC, SN, Dip Burns and Calvin Fish in the booth, Brian Tilt in the pit lane. And if you're outside the US, then live, free and without interruption, go to the live video tab on imsaradio.com or go to imsa.tv and we'll give you flag to flag coverage all happening on Sunday afternoon 454 even around the track on our scanner frequency as well so let's see who makes the first charge whether it's a first push lap or they're prepping the Michelin tyres. Always interesting to see how the tyres are brought in. First car to come round will be the number 10 of Philippe Albuquerque. The Koninka Minolta team, he goes across the line now and starts his fast lap. Then the red and white wheel and engineering car. So Albuquerque with clear track ahead of him and the only car ahead of him is Harry Tinknell and Harry's just coming out on his outlap in the 55 Mazda he's at turn six right now eleven and a half minutes to go Ben Keating goes through in the number 52 Piawa Matheson wait for them to come round and start clicking off the times just checking to see where that first car is coming down the final corner now then for the number 10 of Philippe Albuquerque rounds the final left hander right now so this is the first push lap Let's see where it sits. Jeremy Shaw watching interestedly. 1.15.8, Jeremy. Not yeah, bad. Good, Not no, bad. Pretty good, first, pretty good first lap there. Durrani 
uh, fractionally slower, 16.1, K-Mag 16.3. Uh, the quickest on that, uh, the first flying lap, actually, was Dane Cameron uh, at an 18.1. So we're going to see he's coming across the line right now. He goes to the top, does to Dane Cameron, a 1.14.957. So that's the first sub-15 minute lap here in this qualifying session. And uh, the uh, the first sub one minute 15 lap in qualifying in ever here in a DPI car at, uh, at World Tech Raceway Laguna Seca. Got some news coming in that is going to affect GT Daytona. I'm just uh, shares on it at the moment and just doing some arithmetic here, but it is going to affect the top of the championship in GT Daytona with it penalty coming through for a violation at the end of their qualifying session we'll get back to that in a moment as we're watching the times here with Dan Cameron on that 14-9 then laid it down and now he's on yeah, the cool, very the cool good. down lap that was a great lap uh, for Dan Cameron out of the box that team struggled yesterday with this number 60 car some big changes overnight and came back much stronger this morning I think this is a cool down lap now and he'll probably go for for another one uh, coming up uh, next time around, see what he can see if he can go even faster. It's still quicker, so Dane Cameron with that 14.957, just outside 1 minute 50, 150.053 for Philip Albuquerque in the other Acura economy 10. So that was a 25, so 10 seconds slower. That's what Jeremy means by the cool down lap. Ben Keating goes to the top of LMP2 with a 117.8. PR1 Matheson Motorsport. He's uh, he's really laying it down ahead of everybody else. Nobody anywhere near that at the moment as they're getting up to speed. Yeah, he's got three seconds or more in hand uh, over Stephen Thomas, who's in second place at the moment, uh, ahead of John Ferrano in third, Dwight Merriman in fourth position. So that PR1 Matheson Motorsports, Oracle car number 52, Ben Keating, uh, head and shoulders above everybody else at the moment. Right, before anything else. Uh, happens. Uh, it's still Cameron from Albuquerque by 0 0.0. No, it's not because Albuquerque's gone to the top. I'll get to you in a moment, Shay, because I know we've got some important news. And Harry Tinkle's pushing on as well. Hasn't had a representative lap yet. Remember, he went out much later than everybody else. So he's on his push lap now. Shay Adam, news from GT Daytona that affects both the overall and the sprint championship. In terms of when you may exit a car in between the sessions, the driver can get out when they do get back to the pit box. But at the end of the session, the driver must remain in the car until the checkered flag. Ross Gunn did not remain behind the wheel of the 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin, resulting in a loss of qualifying times, meaning that that car will score no points from the qualifying session, which by my math, once again by that, puts Turner Motorsport comfortably back in the lead of the class, 1944 points versus the 1912 of Roman and Ross. That is a big swing. I'll come back to you about the grid position in a moment, but we've got a new fastest lap, Jeremy Shaw, and it's to coin a good old motorsport uh, phrase, a new qualifying record. It is Dave Cameron. Uh, he was on the pole here one year ago at 115.174, which is just over a tenth of a second outside the lap record that was set the previous year by Ricky Taylor. But now Cameron has eclipsed that 150, 114.520. But Albuquerque again bounces back, 114.441. These cars just getting quicker and quicker. It's the Portuguese now, Philip Albuquerque and the Colonic and Minolta, Acura, who goes back to the top of the charts. Before we get more changes underline that Ben Keating is still at the top of LMP2 117 2 so sitting a very pretty three and a half nearly four seconds ahead of everybody else and in fact uh, that is a cracking time from Ben Shade just to underline what we were talking about there for that Aston Martin that was in the point scoring session I presume that does not affect their grid position then. Uh, correct. If it is for the point scoring session, it has no impact on the position qualifying session Got if me. race control decides that that is the thing. But remember, we talked about this the last weekend out. 
drivers got out of their car before the checkered flag had come out. Race control clarified it for us before the session was even done that drivers are allowed to get out in the 10 minute break, but they are still to remain in their cars after the, the points qualifying session has concluded. Got you. Still the battle for pole position goes on. Pipo Tarani sitting in fourth at the moment. He's nearly a full second away from Philippe Albuquerque. He goes across the line now. He was creating a bit of a gap for it for himself. Oh, loses the back end of the car. Lots of steering input going through the Andretti hairpins. And just balancing the car through the middle and on the exit. He'll know immediately that that lap, I think, has gone away there. Wasn't using all the exit curb from turn three either. Looks smooth through four, but I, I'm not sure that uh, this lap's going to be an improvement for people, Jeremy. I think you're right, John, and uh, you know, he hasn't yet got within a half a second of the time he set this morning in that car either. Everybody else is, pretty much everybody else is, is going faster. Certainly, uh, Mac, Ke Kevin Magnussen is. He's third fastest at the moment. The other surprise, Harry Tinknell, well, he's just managed to get himself ahead of Ben Keating also ahead of Tristan Virgil, so Tinkle up into fifth position now, but uh, almost a full second behind the two Acuras at the front of the field at the moment. Yeah, those are the two cars that are in, ter in terms of what we're used to seeing here, adrift just a, a little bit. So Albuquerque comes to the pit lane with still four and a half minutes to go, I would suggest at the 114.4 then, that is going to be the Koninka Minolta Gambit. 0-1, Cadillac, Kevin Magnussen needs to find half a second to get on the front row. Six tenths to be on pole position. Uses all of the exit curb from turn three and he's got Durrani using him. Uh, as a target as well, the red and white car behind is Durrani as they head up towards turn number five, Magnussen. Nice front end on that Cadillac, turned in really sharply at turn five. Now climbing the hill to turn six. Durrani on a decent lap as well, I reckon. But they're not setting best sectors. Three and a half minutes to go. Magnussen at the top of the corkscrew and through it right illuminated number three on the side of the zero one car inside of row two at the moment for the zero one Cadillac down into the final corner second in the first sector alone John, yeah compared to uh, Albuquerque yeah absolutely Dwight Merriman up to second position in LMP2 two and a half seconds oh, back though that's a heck of a time yeah. from from Katie. Ben's hooked yeah. it up this weekend, has not he? he? Certainly has. That was a fantastic effort by him. He's only, what, he's 1.8 seconds behind Tristan Vautier, who just brought number five Cadillac into the pits. There was uh, no improvement there for Jan Magnussen, but only by 0 0.06 of a second. He came very, very close to matching his previous best. There is an improvement for Dane Cameron, but it's not quite enough. 0 0.023 separates the two Acuras at the moment. Wow. With, uh, Still a couple of minutes remaining, so he's got time for one kind of cool down lap here, Cameron, Hit. and then more, one more fast lap if he chooses to go for it. Here comes Tinknell, he's going to improve. He's got a little bit of traffic ahead of him. It's uh, Stephen Thomas in the Win Autosport car, just coming down the final corner now, setting two green times. That's best for, for Harry. Now, this might just move him up ahead of people to Rani. They're only 0.04 of a second between them at the moment, but I don't think it's going to trouble very much further up the field indeed it's exactly that but that's pulled him within now six tenths of the leader and now just point uh, half a second at least uh, away from the front row but point zero two six from Kevin Magnuson to move to the other side of the grid into the pit lane for Durrani it's not working for people and the wheel and engineering crew they were super quick in the free practice session Jeremy haven't been able to replicate it here no, they haven't. I mean, the two fastest cars this morning were the number 55 and the number 31, separated by just two thousandths of a second at a 114.5. Neither of them has broken 1 minute 15 here in the qualifying session. Dane Cameron, uh, he's, he's done as well, so he's going to settle for second position. Once again, it's going to be Acura for the third year in a row on the pole position here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Unless Harry Tinkler can pull something magical out of the, out of the 
bag. Not on this lap, but he'll get round to do one more. It is going to be a lap, last lap dash. There's only three cars out there. Magnussen, Stephen Thomas and Tinknell, who crosses the line now with 36 seconds to go. He'll be on his own on the circuit. Down into the final corner now. Excuse me. He'll come across the line with 20, 19 seconds to go. That was uh, the 55 that was going through ahead of him. That's uh, Tignall. So they've both got through. So Stephen Thomas. Who else is out there? Is that the number eight still out there? Yes, it is. John Ferrano, the town motorsport car, going through. So what was Harry's first sector like? 28.5. It's not good enough. battle at the front of the field that I thought we might do. Pit lane for Tignall. Uh, Magnussen coming in as well. John Ferrano will complete his lap. He's coming to the line now. See if he improves. Final car at the track to see the chequered flag. 121.6, oh, pretty close to his best time, but not good enough. So it'll be Ben Keating and PR1 Matheson Motorsport for his third consecutive pole in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship for the number 52. 117.227, so two and a half seconds quicker than the field. And Philippe Albuquerque, Jeremy Shaw, for the number 10, Conning and, and Minolta Accurate. Uh, makes it an Acura 1-2 with Dan Cameron in second place. They lock out the front row. Yeah, hats off there to uh, Philip Albuquerque. That's a really fine effort. That is his uh, first pole position in the IMSA World Tech Sports Car Championship uh, of the prototype drivers now. Only Lloyd Duval has, has yet to gain uh, at least one pole position. And uh, generally, it's uh, Tristan Voti who qualifies the car. I did do today, certainly. So uh, another feather in the cap there for like, Philip Albuquerque. Uh, Ricky Taylor uh, has uh, what he won this race uh, last uh, last year with Elio Castro Nevers and looking to make it two in a row and certainly Philip Albuquerque has put that Konica Minolta accurate in the best position to do so by qualifying on the pole position this afternoon and sure it's not been a happy track for Philip Albuquerque here down through the years yeah, he's never been on the podium at this track, and there are very few tracks in North America where you can say that for the championship leader. He was actually a part of a car that didn't even take the start back in 2018, Joao Barbosa, getting hit from behind and coming to a stop well before the start line. They were in the championship hunt that year, credited with zero points not taking the start. So Philippe Albuquerque getting a pole position here, his first ever pole position in IMSA, even a little bit sweeter. And not to mention those 35 points that comes in to help, especially when Felipe Nasser and Pipo Durrani are trying to hunt you down. Well, it's another Taylor pole position. We had Jordan on pole for Corvette. Uh, Ricky's car and Wayne Taylor's car on pole position courtesy of Philippe Albuquerque. And that is indeed, Jeremy, very good points for the championship leader. And this is where these points do start to add up. Yeah, tr true. Yeah. That, yeah, that is that is absolutely a fact. And uh, coming into this weekend, actually, Ricky Taylor and Philip Albuquerque, they've they've scored 220 points in qualifying prior to this weekend. It's just one more than Felipe Nasser and Pipo Durrani have 219 uh, of, of qualifying points from each of the races. But now uh, this will be a nine point swing. It'll be 35 then for the championship leaders uh, Taylor and Albuquerque, and only 26 for the fifth position qualifying there. I think it's the worst of the season for the number 31 car. So that'll extend that championship lead just a little bit more. And it had been whittling down these last few races. That's exactly what uh, Wayne Taylor and these boys will uh, were looking for. 
Thanks to Shea Adam, our VP Racing Fuel Pit and Paddock reporter. Jeremy Shaw was with me, John Hangdorf, in the Haggerty Global Broadcast Centre. Uh, we've got plenty of broadcasting to come this weekend. Go to imsaradio.com and go to the bottom of the homepage. You'll see the schedule for RS2. IMSA Radio there. We're live in sound and vision with IMSA action from here at WeatherTech. Raceway Laguna Sega and from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as well for Porsche Carrera Cup North America. Thanks for being with us. We'll be speaking to you again soon. More action from IMSA to come this weekend.